Hogwarts Day. It is September 1st, the beginning of a new school year at our favorite school of witchcraft and wizardry. And those of you who are actually at Hogwarts, don't get mad at me. I'm filming this at 7.30 p.m. on September 1st in my time zone, but that means it's like 2.30 in the morning, September 2nd, where you're at. But it's still September 1st here, so I still wanted to celebrate. school day for our beautiful Hogwarts. Hogwarts, Hoggy, Hoggy, Hogwarts. The Hogwarts Express left this morning promptly at 11 a.m. And all of the amazing students from the bright eye first years to the hopefully not already nastily exhausted seventh years, they all boarded the Hogwarts Express this morning and went back to the best place on earth. But of course, since it is back to Hogwarts day, I have put on my own old Hogwarts robes. <gasps> Hashtag Hogwarts class of 2015. But anyway, as just a seasoned student myself, Myself, having gone to Hogwarts for seven years and then now being in college for a few years after. So I decided to film kind of an advice video just for all of those going back to school, mostly those little muggle-born first years who are really just entering a whole new world that's so different from what you've been a part of before. One of the things I was also looking through was the supplies list I got when I was a mere 11 year old and got my letter to Hogwarts. Actually one of the staff members came to introduce me to magic because I too am I'm a muggle-born, and so I know what you're going through. It's so weird when, you know, that first person shows up and is like, you're magic. But anyway, I decided to pull up my supplies list because I've become one of those people who doesn't really buy supplies until last minute. I don't know if it's because I'm lazy or because I want to know if I actually need said books and supplies. So I want to go to each of my classes first. That's at least how I am now when I'm in going to a muggle college. Since as a muggle-born, you probably don't have many people to, you know, go ideas off of and learn from about, you know, what you need to get. And all of these items seem so strange and, you know, foreign. I'm going to go ahead and explain some and kind of explain what you need, what you don't, what you can hold off on, and all of that stuff. So the first thing you need is obviously your uniform, and obviously I love mine so much, I still have it four years later. When you get your supplies list, it says you need three sets of plain black robes. Of course, you may be wondering what happens here. Um, it's, it's blue right here and here, and in the hood, kind of in the inside, it, it's blue. Um, once you get sorted into your house, they do charm the inside just to, you know, color code you, you know, so the teachers can keep track of you and such. Mine are blue because I was in Ravenclaw. Best house ever. Hope you're in it. But yeah, you, you don't have to worry about that. Just just buy normal black ones. Anyway, something that they don't mention when, on the list is because they kind of assume you know it already. A part of robes is you do need stuff for underneath or else you're going to be awkwardly naked. You do need a few nice white collared shirts to wear underneath. It's kind of just like standard school uniform. And then you'll want to buy a few black ties. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy because like with the robes, they're going to charm them to be your colors once you get sorted. Super cute. Ravenclaw! So of course you're gonna want a few black ties and then also you want some black pants like dress pants or also if you like skirts you can go for like a skirt knee length or longer and if you do go for the skirt you definitely do want some black tights because it's chilly in the winter. And then of course some black shoes and some socks. You know all the basics. Just normal school uniform you do still need that stuff even though you have robes. Robes aren't your full ensemble you know. Also, when it comes to finding robes, definitely Madame Malkins is great. You might want to get some used stuff, because if that's your jam, they're cheaper, all that. You definitely want to get one with a nice wand pocket. You know, maybe you should hold off on buying your robes until after you buy your wand so you can make sure the wand pocket fits. That's a good idea. Advice. The next thing on the list is that you do need a pointed hat because of course we're wizards, but we never wear them. Mine doesn't really fit anymore because of course this is meant to fit my 11 year old head. You do need one. Teachers will get mad at you if you don't have one at like the big feasts and stuff. And obviously at the end of year feast where the house cup is announced, if you win, you want to throw it up in the air like you graduated, but it's just you won the house cup. But you do need one. They're not super duper expensive and this is all it has to be. No fancy rims or anything. It also says you do need protective gloves. Every Everyone needs their own pair because you really need those in herbology and other stuff, mostly herbology. Don't want to get your hands dirty. Yuck. So do get some dragon hide gloves or if you're cheap and don't want to buy real dragon hide, just normal gardening gloves. They'll work just as fine. Also, yes, do make sure you purchase a winter cloak. 
that's on there too. It is freezing up at Hogwarts in the winter, so yes, definitely need one, 100%. Then some supplies you need outside of the uniform. Of course you need a wand. This is my amazing wand. It chose me at Ollivander's. Ollivander's is the best by far. Go to Diagon Alley. Honestly, everything you need is at Diagon Alley, but you do maybe want to check out some of the cheaper shops with used stuff, with other stuff, but wands do go to Ollivander's. Don't get any cheap crap with a freaking puff skin hair in the inside. That won't work very well. And don't try using someone else's wand. I've seen a lot of people who want to save money using like an older sibling's or a parent's wand and that just do it doesn't work very well. You can't be learning real magic if you don't have a wand that actually likes you. Your wand has to choose you. It has to like you. If you if it doesn't then you're just you're not gonna learn. What's the point of school if you don't have a wand that works? So yeah, go to Ollivander's for your wand. Seven galleons. If you want to save money somewhere, save it in the books. And I'll explain that later. Don't go skimping out on your wand. Then you do need a cauldron. Pewter standard size too. Those are pretty standard. They are charmed to be pretty light, so don't worry about that. They're actually a pretty good book bag. If you don't want to buy a book bag, you can maybe save and just carry your cauldron everywhere with you. It's pretty bulky though. It's light, but it's bulky, so maybe you do want a book bag. Or what you can do, some of these robes have pockets in the side too. When you check out your robes, get pockets. They pockets. And you can maybe get one of the six years or seven years to do an undetectable extension charm on your pockets. And then you never have to carry a bag with you. That's so smart. I should have thought of that when I was a first year. The only problem is you need help from one of the older students or teachers. But yeah, try that, it might be smart. Of course you need some vials for potions. If you are really down on the money, you might be able to convince the potion master to lend you some. Cause I mean, they are pretty expensive. A set of fancy vials is the same as a wand. So probably go with the cheaper vials. The glass ones are only three galleons. That's more expensive than your dang books though. It's a lot of money. So if you don't have money for that, maybe see if the potions master can like you borrow some. I'm sure he has a box of them somewhere in the in the dungeons. Then you do need your own telescope. You use that in astronomy first years. You have that Wednesdays at midnight. So be prepared. You're gonna have some late nights on Wednesday, but don't stay up late the other nights. Bad idea. Just Wednesdays. Telescope is like a good five galleons. So you might want to share that with someone who doesn't have astronomy at the same time as you. Like maybe like a third year somewhere in there, you know, who's not in your same astronomy astronomy class, you can, you can split seas with them, then you only have to pay like two and a half galleons, which is what? Two galleons and nine, eight and a half sickles, and half a sickle is 15, 14 and a half knuts. Yeah, I don't know how wizards do any math. You also do need some brass scales. Same thing. Brass ones are cheaper than silver, but they're still a good three galleons, so they're still pretty expensive. You are gonna need them throughout your seven years at Hogwarts, but the nice thing is you only really use them for potions, so if you wanna go splitsies on that one too, the things that are only used for one subject, since there's only one teacher for each subject, no, you're not two of you gonna have the same subject class at once, unless you're in the same year. So if you wanna go splitsies with a sibling or a friend, that's a really good idea. I get that muggle boys, you can't do that. But what might be a good idea is now that you guys are actually at Hogwarts right now, so you're meeting people, go find one of the third years or fourth years in your house and be like, hey, I wasn't able to buy a telescope or some gra brass scales right now. Can I borrow yours? And they'll be like, heck yeah! Because houses are awesome and everyone in them loves each other most of the time. And of course, it does say it's optional to have one pet, an owl, cat, or toad. I've heard of some rando bringing a rat or something. That's dumb. I don't know why anyone would want a rat with them. But yeah, unless you already have a cat or a toad, don't buy one, buy an owl. There's literally, unless you're in love with cats, which I get some people are. Don't get a toad, stupid. But if, unless you're in love with cats, get an owl because, you know, cats just sit there and are pets. But owls are freaking your mail delivery service and you can send letters home to your family all the time without having to worry about the wonky post system. Owls, get one if you want. If, you know, you don't have money for one, obviously you don't need to. You can borrow an owl from a friend. But if you are choosing any of the pets, do get an owl. They're the best. Of course, it does say that you 
can't bring a broomstick. If you're a first year, that's just for safety liability reasons. They don't want any first years getting hurt on the brooms. So they want to make sure y'all know how to fly before you bring a broom to campus. But if you are a first year, and I'm talking to you freaking pure bloods, and some of you half bloods out there, if you do have a broom at home and you're a pro Quidditch player or something, don't bring a picture of you on your broom doing loop-de-loops and whatnot and just showing it to everyone all the time. It's cool the first time, gets annoying. Don't show off, just show off when you actually get your broom next year. There are a few things that aren't really mentioned on the list. You do need parchment and quills for all of your classes. Of course, you can get those just at some stores in Diagon Alley, but also they have a supply of them at Hogwarts. So if you forget or if you just don't wanna buy any, you can always move off your teachers. It also says you need a star chart for astronomy. At first, you're kind of just drawing them yourself, but it might be helpful to get your own or to borrow a friend so for reference because they do require you to memorize a lot of information in astronomy. It's pretty much the least magic, most memorization class at Hogwarts, so you're gonna want that as just something helpful. And then also, you do need some ingredients for potions. Those are also typically provided if you need them, especially in the lower years, but it is a good idea if you do have some extra money to buy a good standard potions kit, which does include the, the vials, the cauldron, and the scales, so you can get a pretty good deal on that. So it's a good idea to check that out first, and then if you're not wanting the ingredients, or if it's kind of pricey, then you can kind of pick things out one at a time. Then the last list of things that I have that you need your first year is all your books. There are a bunch of books, and they're all like one or two galleons each, which, you know, it's not a whole lot if you buy one, but if you buy all of them, it does add up to a lot of money. So I'm gonna kind of explain which ones I feel like are most essential and which ones you can kind of just check out from the library as long as you're on Pince's good side. Don't want to be on her bad side. For all these books, I'm not going to list them in the order that they are on the supplies list you get. I'm going to list them in order of how much you need them. So if you do want to save a little bit of galleons, go to the end of the list and kind of just take off books until you get to your right price range and then you'll be able to see which ones that you definitely should get and which ones you can try sharing with someone or checking them out at the library when you need them. The first one on the list is the Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1 by Miranda Goshawk. This is an absolute essential for year one. Charms is my favorite subject for sure. It's all the good stuff, I feel like. And the, the Grade 1 book, it includes like all of the first year level spells. There's Lumo, Spongify, Defindo, Incendio, Alohomora, Wingardium Leviosa, Coloportis, Repello, all these great spells that I think are just essentials in the wizarding world. And I feel like this book is just an essential if there's one you decide to read ahead on, do it on this one. I mean, you can learn super important and like versatile spells at the beginning of year one that you normally learn at the end of year one, like Repero and Alohomora, and it'll just be super convenient throughout, you know, day-to-day -day life. So definitely get that one. I think it's also cheaper than most of the other ones, so that's good. Then there's also A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emily Switch. That one's only one galleon, so you should probably get that one, especially since it is gonna be used in year two as well, and especially is one of those beginner books. Those are always good to have. And then another one we've got is The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. This one's only one galleon, so I think it is pretty worth it. Um, you do use it from years one to five, so if you don't get it your first year, definitely get it later on to prep for those OWLs. But I think there is definitely a focus on this book in year one and two, so it is one of those ones that even though it does go up to OWL level, you probably want it in the early years too. It does cover like pretty simple and basic offensive and defensive spells when it comes to like defense against the dark art stuff you've got simple simple defense against the dark art spells that are just super super helpful and then it does detail some of the dark creatures that you might run into and stuff about them that you'd need to know so it does have a lot of helpful information and it is only one galleon so i think it's definitely worth it and then also 1000 magical herbs and fungi that one's by felita spore it's two galleons i believe at flotion blocks and that one you use mostly in herbology but also a little bit in potions that one's actually super useful because it's kind of like an encyclopedia style book. It just has tons of information. It's a thick book too. That's why it's two galleons, but it's it's something that's super helpful. So if you're interested in herbology, definitely grab your own copy. If not, you might be able to share with a friend. The next one, Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger. And that one's also two galleons. It's also a pretty thick book because it's the potions book for everything from first year to fifth year, all the way up to OWLs. You're going to need that book. So definitely get it at some point, especially when you're getting up in those higher years 
fourth, fifth year getting ready for your OWLs. But it is really helpful to have your own copy because it is like a recipe book basically for potions. I mean, if you ever find out like good tricks for certain potions, you can make the annotations and the margins and stuff. But it is something you could share with a friend, like with your desk mate if you wanted to. But it just is really nice to have your own copy. The next one is A History of Magic by Bathilda Bagshot. Now keep in mind there are two editions. The first one was pu published in 1947 and the next one was published sometime later like in the in the 80s or something. But this is a book you use throughout your education at Hogwarts. So if you don't get it now you probably should get it sometime especially like in fifth year when you're getting ready for OWLs. But just keep in mind it isn't necessary to get the second edition because the book doesn't cover anything after 1900. So you don't really need to get a book from later in the 1900s if it never covers anything in the 1900s anyway. But yeah, that's one that maybe in your first year you don't really need yet. But I'd say definitely check it out at the library a few times because you're probably not going to pass your history and magic exams at the end of the year unless you read it because you are going to fall asleep in Ben's class. It's 100% certain going to happen. But if you do decide not to get that one, that can save you a whole two galleons that can go towards, like I was saying earlier, getting a good wand. Next one, Magical Theory by Adelbert Waffling. Honestly, this one doesn't have a specific subject that's connected to it. It's kind of connected to all of them. And so you might kind of get readings in it from all of the subjects, but at the same time, since all of the other subjects have their own book assigned, you won't get that many. So that being said, it would probably be fine if you just pick it up at the library every time you do need to read it. But also that being said, this is probably the first one that people don't have. So you'll want to be the first one to the library to make sure you get one of the copies that they have so you can actually get the homework done, which as Ravenclaw, I feel like is very important. Do your homework, kids. And then we've also got Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. This one's funny because it's also two galleons, but it's actually not that thick. It's like an encyclopedia of Fantastic Beasts, but it doesn't actually have that much in it. So this one is one of the ones you, that you might want to leave out, especially since it's not specifically used in any of the classes. Like you reference it a little bit in like Defense Against the Dark Arts, but you don't study Care of Magical Creatures until third year and only if you want to. And then there's a different book that you get for that class, but you you definitely do need Fantastic Beasts and where to find them if you do study Care Magical Creatures in third year. But if you don't, and if you're a first or second year, you probably don't actually need this book. You can just, when you do have to find something from it, just go to the library and take a look at it. I even, when I think I was a second year, I went and checked out Fantastic Beasts and where to find them from the library. And I checked out the same exact copy that Harry Potter checked out when he was at Hogwarts. Like the celebrity Harry Potter and his friend Ron those two had been like annotating it although it wasn't really annotations it was just like jokes and stuff in the margins but it was super cool and it seems like maybe even Harry Potter did that he might have not always had his copy of Fantastic Beasts and so he checked it out of the library but yeah there's my list of books listed for first year at Hogwarts in the order of how much I think you need them with the price is also there so that's good information for you especially if you haven't gotten your books yet if you were planning to have like your parents send them I do hope this information really helped for all all of those who are just starting Hogwarts, which is a whole huge new adventure. Nothing you, like you've ever done before, especially for you Muggleborns out there. Good luck this school year. I hope no one tries to kill you. Anyway, happy September 1st. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely leave a like, share with your friends, comment down below any thoughts going into the school year for you. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of my videos. You can subscribe by clicking here and check out more of my videos. The top one is another Harry Potter related one and down below is my playlist of all my Harry Potter related videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you next Saturday. Bye!